So shout out to Reverend Slim. Thank you, Reverend Slim. He sent me four of his, four of his pioneer. Whoa, whoa. Get it right. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot which one. Was. <laughs> he, he Shout out to River Flame. Four, wah, wah, wah. four of his uh, Atmos upfiring speakers, the pioneers, those old school toppers that you put on top of the. Oh yeah, I know, saw that. I saw that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have the very nice of you, Jeremy. Shape. Thank you. Oh, thank that you, was buddy. so cool. I was I was thinking he's gonna send two. He sent four of them. I'm like, oh cool. Um, he's like, I don't need this shit. Let's just. Yeah, going. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I was curious about him is I've heard pretty much nothing but. Kind of not so good things about these up firing speakers and i've actually had some before but they were like some cheap onkyo ones that came up came with the home theater in the box type of deal and it was like very poorly made right who, who wants an onkyo speaker really like where's that it's probably yeah, not right. good so anyway that didn't work very well anyway i got a chance to try these up firing speakers from pioneer made by andrew jones mm-hmm. right long time ago when he was still at pioneer and in my living room, I have a nine foot ceiling. Yep. Flat. It, it is very convincing. So, I, you know, I was just kind of surprised. That's what I wanted to know. Could this actually work? And it, in my case, they are pretty convincing. Like, I'm amazed. Right? And I kind of feel bad that they didn't really catch on. I feel like people hate on them a lot. And I don't know if it's just these particular speakers or if all of them work well, or I don't know. I haven't mm-hmm. tested other ones except for the Onkyo that was straight garbage and this one that actually works. Um, I measure them and they do something very interesting. Aaron, tell me if this makes sense or if I'm making stuff up. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. All right. Okay. So here it is. It has a huge dip. Like huge and pretty wide dip at two kilohertz. Okay. Now we we see this kind of like in speakers kind of often, right? Yeah. Around that area, you see like you know BBC yeah, crossover dip, whatever, right? and all that, right? But this is like obvious. It's like this is on purpose. Like they put something there to make sure that there's this huge dip. Yeah. Um, is there anything about two kilohertz that's special aside from like our hearing is really good there? Talking about the head related transfer function, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, maybe yeah, they, no, they, though. I, I these are the bouncers, right? They say they say that they they don't show the frequency response because they do something to make the bounce happen properly. Do you think that's part of the or no? Okay, so to that, if you if you tell your your Denon or Marantz that you're using an uh, whatever Atmos enabled speaker, yep, it will automatically try to put in this like little curve. Really? Yeah, but it's not it's not a two kilohertz dip. It's just like a little boost around seven kilohertz and then a dip and then up again. It's not anything crazy, actually. But but two kilohertz, this is I to me, it looks like something that Andrew Jones kind of just made up. Like <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna do this thing, you know? Yeah. So with these up firing speakers, the main issue is localization because they're actually directly in front of you and you don't want it to sound like it's coming from that speaker. You want it to sound like the first point, the source is the reflection. So you have to trick your brain into somehow thinking that it's not coming from that speaker, right? And so what they do is they make the speaker very, uh, well, I guess the dispersion is very, very narrow, right? And so it's going to hit this one spot, but not get to you in front of you. But the two kilohertz thing I thought was very interesting because if it is, if it does have to do with head related transfer function, and is I kind of did a little calculation and correct me if I'm wrong, but that two kilohertz corresponds to the average distance between the ears. Is that about right? Two kilohertz is that frequency? Um, I don't know. What's the average? He was totally not ears? paying attention. I Look think, at that. I think six and a half, six. <laughs> six and a half. Gotcha, Aaron. Yeah. Divide by seven. <laughs> what? So, so two kilohertz <laughs> corresponds to that. Yeah, okay. seven inches is uh, nineteen twenty-eight. Six point five is going to be a little bit higher. All right. So this is 2000. all six point five. All, okay. So this is just all off the top of my head, just kind of seeing. Now, when we talk about uh, you know phantom center, right? The problem with stereo, we always say, is there's a two kilohertz dip caused by in, interoral crosstalk cancellation, right? So two kilohertz also, right? Oral. 
Inter inter oral, right? Inter-oral. inter-oral. So there's, there has something to do with this two kilohertz thing where, co- you know, some companies seem to like to do that, <laughs> you know, put this dip over around there. And I, my theory is that because that's the distance between our ears, it's the optimal frequency for us to locate something, you know, by turning our head slightly, it's like, oh, okay, there it is. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So if you notch that out, it makes it much more difficult because that frequency that you would typically use is just not there. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so that's what I noticed with these is it did, it did do a good job of making me not perceive it as coming from that speaker because uh, of that two yeah. kilohertz dip. Uh, I have to experiment and add it back in and see if that changes things. Cause if I add in two kilohertz and all of a sudden it's like, you know, sounds totally different. Then I know that that's what's actually happening. But uh, it's interesting. Maybe that's why companies try to do that because they want the speaker to disappear. Mm, right. right. Uh, I don't. Right. I don't, I don't even notice them listening to music. Yeah. Oh, Maybe no. <laughs> I don't think the speaker has totally to disappeared into the room. I've heard. Like Fred? Fred He's would like, say nah. some shit like that. Right. Totally. <laughs> he doesn't buy it. He's like, no, I don't yeah. think it works. That's <laughs> eh, okay. It's just a. It's just a theory. I have no idea. You know, that's that's part of this whole thing is experimenting, right? So I'm going to try it and see. It might it might do absolutely nothing, but it's just very interesting that that dip is there. Yeah, yeah I don't know why it would be there. I mean, so it, it you're also basically assuming that it was done on purpose, right? Uh, if I show it to you, knowing that okay, so you just re- recently made a video of a bunch of Elac speakers, right? All yeah. Andrew Jones design, right? Yeah. So that guy, I mean, he doesn't. N- n- all of a sudden, like, oh, I forgot how to make crossovers. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I guess not necessarily on purpose, but, you know, that could have been just a compromise, right? Like between where he needed to cross the tweeter over and as high as the woofer would play or something like that. Or it could mm. be a compromise of the orientation of the speaker or the the baffle width or something like that. There could be some effect. So it could be a causality rather than um, mm-hmm. like something intentional. This whole oh, time right. I was trying to look for that one photo and so i guess i just took a photo and then i didn't save it but here's here's that upfiring speaker oh tell me if this is an accident <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's I definitely mean, not an accident that's wild yeah that looks like it's like <sighs> that's directly passive like I'm speaker, not, right? I'm not, what's that passive? it's a passive speaker right yeah yeah, I'm not doing anything crazy. Like it's a notch measuring filter. right in front of it. Yeah, yeah I mean, that notch. looks like a straight up notch filter. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a concentric. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. I mean, that doesn't look like an artifact or anything. I mean, that looks so. No. That's this so is not steep. an accident. Yeah, that looks so. This is steep. not an accident. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking okay. like maybe it was like a dip, and it could be like a diffraction effect, you know, or something like that, you know. But seeing that, I'm that looks like a notch filter. Hmm. So yeah, that's exactly. wild. So these, this is how they look. In case somebody's wondering, let's see, uh, something like this. Let's see. Shoot. There we go. Stop screen. Present. There it is. Those things. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. a, I think a four or four and a half inch, and then. Something like a, like a half inch tweeter, like a small little tiny tweeter, concentric. Yeah. So I don't see anything there that would physically cause it. Just just by, just looking at it, I don't know. Yeah, I'm with but you. Not, that's a, that's obvious, right? So anyway, I think that it was done on purpose. Uh, hmm. I I asked Andrew Jones, but uh, you know, he's busy. Yeah, he's busy. Um. Anyway, interesting stuff. Now, if you can't catch the show, we do have an audio version at anchor.fm slash daily hi-fi. So make sure to go on over there if you like to listen to the show.